Now let's look at gas laws. So we're going to look at the relationship between pressure and temperature. We do know that in gas laws, um, anytime we're working in this chapter, our temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Now we're going to record these in Celsius. It's going to kind of work for us, but Kelvin's what you may discover might be easier. So the first thing we're going to do is realize what they're doing and what they're going to do is we're going to take some isopropyl alcohol and they're going to put in some dry ice and get it really, really, really cold. And then they're going to put the gas sample that we're studying the pressure of into this really, really cold liquid and then watch the temperature of the gas or the pressure of the gas sample change as the temperature increases the isopropyl, the really hyper-chilled isopropyl. Our gas sample first is going to be air, and the second one is going to be a nice organic compound. And so we're going to take, do those and take a look at them. So here's our setup. We have air. We've got our nice cold temperature. They've already added the dry ice. We have the pressure, and we have the temperature. So we're going to take a look and just notice that as the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. What you're going to do with this data is you're going to come down here and you're going to record it. So let's say my first column here, and you need to your columns mean. So I'm going to put my temperature here in degrees Celsius. So let's put temp here. Let's go over to the uh, vertical axis here and put pressure. It's always good to put the units. So if I go down here below, I can change the units and put in degrees Celsius for the temperature. And I'm going to put KPA in for the pressure. And then I can record my data. So let's say my first point is this minus 26.9 degrees Celsius and a pressure at 82.19 kPa. And then continue. And as it heats up, the pressure is going to increase. So I'm going to keep changing or um, putting new values in as I go. So make sure you keep stopping it and adding what your values are. And you're going to do this pretty much as the temperature and the pressure stops changing. So if I go down here on minus 16.4, and you're going to need at least a good 10 points to make sense out of this. Now remember that our temperature increases, they're going to go from temperature in Celsius to positive temperatures. So if I keep going here until my um, temperature goes above zero degrees Celsius and I go into positive values, our program here very kindly takes care of that for us. So if I put 2.1 Celsius and a pressure of 91.65 kPa, I can keep recording these here. This is going to allow us to graph it. So you're going to go to the horizontal axis and you're going to do your temperature. For your vertical axis, we're going to look at pressure. And remember here, our pressure increases as our temperature increases. Now we can add a linear regression. A linear regression is what is going to give us the best straight line through these. And when you've got your linear regression, you need to make sure that you take and you record this equation. And this equation here says the pressure is equal to our slope, 0.327 in this case for this experiment, multiplied by the temperature plus the intercept here, which is 90.9. So you're going to take and write that equation down because we're going to need it in a moment. So you're going to take and make that nice graph. You're going to put your um, pressure on the vertical, your temperature on the horizontal. You're going to do your um, linear regression. And then you're going to take and you're going to write down that equation because our job here is to figure out the temperature or the pressure, excuse me, um, oh, excuse me, the temperature where the pressure is zero. So we're going to take and we're going to go back up to our nice equation. We're going to set our pressure equal to zero and we're going to solve for our temperature. Now we should know what that's going to be because that is going to give us here that we know at absolute zero that our pressure should be zero, but you're going to verify that. And you're also going to give the option here of show the origin. So take a look at that and see what that does. Once you have that one done and you take a look at this, you're going to switch your gas from air to difluoroethane, and you're going to take and give that one a shot, and it's going to give you a very different graph. So we're going to make it nice and cold and then see what happens as you heat it up. So this one is going to be more interesting as you heat it up because it's going to get a little strange point in it, and your job is to figure out why.